Here's your challenge. You get to pick one Mythic Legions action figure from each faction. Who are you gonna keep? Dorkware! So as goofy as this sounds, a typical Sunday morning thing for me to do is just kind of like browse around and read around the uh, Mythic Legion Source Horseman webpage. And I got to thinking, if you had to pick just one figure from each faction, like if I had to make that decision myself, which ones would I do? And I started kind of like pondering it and i thought i would just share that in a video with you all i hope you will share yours with me in the comments and kind of let me know um you know which ones you agree with which ones you disagree with and uh yeah i a lot of my decisions end up kind of being based around my collecting tendencies so it's like if it tends to be a figure that has a lot of kit bash possibilities usually like a figure that comes with a lot of stuff or has colors or you know, things that make it really fun for swapping. And then, of course, I, I tend to gravitate towards the 1.0 style, style warrior type characters, knights, orcs, things like that. I do love the goblins. Um, We'll see if any of the goblins make my list. Okay, let's get into this thing. I didn't go in any particular order. I just followed the list that's on the Source Horseman Factions page. So that's the order we're going in. Uh, other than that, I mean, I guess it kind of pairs up the rival factions in, in not in any order, but they're paired together, sort of. So we're going to go in that order, starting with the army of Leodysius. For this faction, it was really down to two figures. I had my top two, and uh, that was between Magnus and Balius. And I think I'm going to give it to Balius being the first horse. I, I just really am kind of blown away still by that figure. So going with Balius for that one. The horses just kind of changed the game, and that figure is amazing. It's really hard to find right now, and another thing about this list is going to be that this isn't a recommendation to go out and buy these figures, because some of them are just out of reach, and you're just better off ordering the next horse, or ordering the next knight, or ordering the next orc that comes down the pike. So that's kind of my little heads up right before we get started here. So um, Magnus would be, be my runner-up, but Balius definitely want that horse in my one of each collection here. Next up is the Legion of Erethir. This one was very difficult. You have goblins, you have orcs, you have Erethir himself, you have demons in the uh, the, the Hellfire Goblin, you have Belphegor. I mean, there's just so many good ones in this, and it's I think it's the, the, the faction with the most figures, so very, very difficult to choose from the Erethir faction, but my number one in the Erethir faction is Vorthog, which really blew me away when I got that in hand. Vorthog just comes with so much. I mean, not I, it, that might be the only figure with swap out feet, <laughs> for crying out loud. Like, I mean, the thing is just loaded, multiple heads. You can have a ton of different looks with that figure, extra parts, just a lot of value in that package. And that's one that I think you can still probably find for, I don't know, it's not going to be the regular 50 bucks, maybe like 70 bucks or something. So if, if you're looking for a slightly older figure, that's a that's definitely a recommendation that I would say, okay, it's okay to look back on for that one. So I don't own Gorgo Etherblade. I do have the Gorgo 2.0 on order. So I kind of have a sneaky suspicion that he could take the cake once he releases, but he's not out yet. So he's not eligible for this list. As difficult as it was to pick a figure in the Aerithir faction, the Etheron faction was instantaneously, I knew exactly which one is my favorite. It was my very first Mythic Legions action figure that I ever purchased. It's one of the best for kit bashing. It's a loaded, loaded deluxe figure, and that is the Deluxe Knight 1.0, and I hope they release that one. I really, really do. It's very expensive in the aftermarket, but it's just such a good figure. It's got both the armored chest torso and the cloth torso. It's got multiple heads, tons of different parts. It is just all out, just balls to the wall, awesome night. So if I just want any one night in my collection, it's going to be that one. And now we're on to the Congregation of Necronominus, the Skeletons, and this and the Etheron faction are both going to be the center points of the upcoming wave that'll go up for pre-order throughout November and into December, because that's going to be the Necronominus wave, the final of the Horseman waves, so there could be something that dethrones these right away in a month from now. So, but for now, they're they're not out yet. So I'm basing it on what we have. And the skeletons, for me, it was up to uh, Brother Mandibulus and Scaphoid. Like those two are just like top tier figures across the entire line of Mythic Legions to me. But for me, 
I tend to have more fun swapping and just having a lot of fun kit bashing. And I just really love how different the color scheme is and just how vibrant and the paintwork is phenomenal. Like the weathering and stuff on the armor. It's a really good figure. It's just an, I, I think it's probably the most underrated figure in the entire line. And that is scaphoid. That would be the one figure from Necronominus that I would keep. Who would you keep from from Necronominus. Next up is Xylona's Flock, and from the Alithia wave, I'm still missing my large order, so I'm waiting on a lot of figures that I just have not had in hand yet. I don't have the Artemis II, I don't have Krotos, I don't have the new horse, I don't have Alithia herself. Well, that's in a different faction, but uh, I, I just don't have a lot of them yet. I have reviewed Bardrick, though, and that one just shot right to the top of my list of Xylona's flock. But there are some other really good ones, like Thistlethorn and Faunus, the, you know, the Rocket and Groot of Mythic Legions. I, I really like those two as well. But yeah, I, I mean, Lord Bardrick, that head sculpt, the brand new armor, the paint is just next level on these, on these more recent figures. So I tend to end up liking the newer ones better than I like the older ones. Next up, we have the vampires. We have Elithia's brood. And again, I don't have all of them in hand yet. I did get a chance. Thanks to my friend, Trevor, one six shooter. He lent me a couple. He let me Varg and he lent me Valak and I was able to review those, but those did not take the throne. In my opinion, the best figure in this wave is Vorgus Vermilius. Now that's a figure that is really hard to find, so don't consider this a recommendation to go out and buy Vorgus Vermilius. But I I do love that figure. It's so unique. The paintwork on that armor is just it's just wild. It's so different. It's it's not like any other action figure I own. And I love knights. Like knights are my favorite type of Mythic Legions figure. So you kind of combine that crazy blood armor with the knight sculpt and just a home run figure for me next up is a smaller faction and that is the convocation of basilia they don't have a lot of figures out yet they kind of ramped it up a little bit in the poxis way but those aren't out yet so uh my favorite figure in that wave is balam again <laughs> for me back to the knights back to the kit bashing um i do love that you have that swap out uh, helmeted head that you can kind of mix and just make him a general knight. The only other one I do have right now is Ravana, and that's a great figure. I really like that figure, but I, again, I tend to lean towards the 1.0s, and that, that bottom figure is, is incredible. Counterpoint to Basilia, we have the Poxis faction, and this one also got a big infusion with the Poxis wave. That's going to be coming out early next year. Um, so this, again, we have more magic user type figures and this one does have a few, like I could totally go with Zazar or Zarya. I really love those demons. I think they're fantastic figures, but, um, for me, I think one of those figures that you don't realize how cool it is until you have it in hand, that is the shadow elf warrior. I probably would also like the Ranger in, in Malachi, but I don't have those two. But that Shadow Elf Warrior is is fantastic. I just really love their interpretation of a Dark Elf type character. The next one is probably the most difficult to choose from. This is the Rogue Faction, the House of the Noble Bear. This is a pretty much like the Barbarians and stuff. And like the Deluxe Knight, I very easily could have picked the Deluxe Barbarian. I, I, I do kind of tend to say like, if you were going to just own one Mythic Legions, and I know this is like a common thing that people say, that is the one to own. Like if you're just going to have one Mythic Legions figure, that one's near perfect in terms of that. But I do feel like we've had a lot of the same. We've had a lot of like bare chested, barbarian type, you know, that, that just same skin tone, a lot of the same type of like that bearded head sculpt. And it just... Feels to me like if I wanted to keep one, that specific one isn't the one I want to keep. The one I do want to keep, though, is Calavius, which takes that bare-chested body, takes it in a different direction with the darker skin, and then you have that unique helmeted head sculpt, and it's got some cool pieces with the trident and stuff. Like, it's just a really cool figure. I, I love the paintwork on it. Some other notables from the House of the Noble Bear... Romulus and Atlas, they are two of my favorite figures, and it's just a, it was a really hard one. This one, of all of them, it's like, it, to me, it's almost like a coin toss, but 
Calavius takes it mostly for the uniqueness. I know Atlas does have like a unique head sculpt, but again, it kind of comes back to just the color scheme and stuff. Calavius has something really unique about him. And last but not least, we have the Sons of the Red Star, another rogue faction. And this one was actually easy for me. Sir Gerard. Sir Gerard is incredible. If you don't have a Sir Gerard, you need to get one before the supply dries up. And I know it's not really available anymore for retail, but it's, it's not like shooting up in price it might be like 70 bucks or something again like it's it's uh it's not one of those oh my gosh it's 200 dollars type figures yet but it will be that figure when it dries up that's going to be impossible to find it has that extra skeleton head it's got such a cool story being a character that is like essentially made to be kit bashed a shapeshifter so sir gerard phenomenal figure probably one of the best knights in the line anyway thanks for watching my video share your choices in the comments below and if you're somewhat new to the line and you're now thinking after watching my video that you want to like i don't know go out and get yourself a vorgus or something like that i'm not telling you not to do that but all i am asking is for you to go watch my previous video my top five tips for new mythic legions collectors because i do have some advice on that exact decision making process anyway thanks for watching and until next time may the force be with you